Hello everyone, Sir Gantelot here again, back with part two of a two-part lesson to help you prepare for your PMP exam, your Project Management Professional exam. We'll be looking within the schedule development process, specifically calculating critical path and determining the float or slack of activities within a project schedule network. Schedule development is one of the project management body of knowledge processes and this one fits into the project time management knowledge area and the planning process group. And along with all the processes in the PMBOK, the PMI lists them showing inputs to the process, outputs from the process, and tools and techniques for implementing the process. And so in these two videos, we've been looking at the critical path method, which is one of the tools and techniques associated with schedule development. This video is one of a series that I, as Sir Gantelot, have loaded onto YouTube where I help you slay those project management monsters that plague us on a daily basis. Monster is management, organization, network, scheduling, and tracking. Error. So let's look again at the critical path method. Two techniques are covered in these two videos. In the first video, we looked at a quick eyeballing method that equips you to answer probably 90% or more of the likely questions that will come up in the network analysis topic. This video covers a little bit more in depth how we can address questions that might ask us about early start, late start, early finish, or late finish. And we do that by using the forward and backward pass technique. So we talked about questions in the exam in part one, we looked at this question. We'll use this same question for this video as well. And basically, you're told that you're a project manager on a, a project of some type and that you need to build the network diagram. And then the question is at the bottom. What is the critical path and what is its duration? And above that, you see all the activities listed for the network with their durations and when they can start in relation to other activities. And in the part one video, we went ahead and built this network here. And we use this same network this time around. But this time, we're going to use a more in-depth method for calculating the critical path and also float and slack of activities using something called the forward and backward pass technique. But first, we said we'll need these questions in case early start, late start come up. Well, let's define what those are. Early start is the earliest an activity can possibly start in the network. And late start is the latest that an activity can possibly start. And for early finish, late finish, similar definitions. Now, what I'd like you to do is remember those words, can possibly, in both of those definitions. If you remember those, you may not have to remember these next two formulas. Nevertheless, there are formulas for the forward and backward pass technique. For the forward pass, the early start of our current activity plus the duration of our current activity gives us the early start of the next activity. When we come back on the backward pass, the late start of our current activity minus the duration of the predecessor gives us the late start of that predecessor. Now there are also two rules we have to remember. During our forward pass, if we find that activities are coming together, in other words, they join, then we need to use the highest possible value given by the formulas from the things that join at that point. On the backward pass, if we have a join, we use the lowest value. Now, we'll see what this means in a moment. It's really not as complicated as it seems. So let's do our forward pass to calculate early start values on that network. The first thing you do is you set the early start of activity A, the first one, to zero. Then we need to calculate the early start of B and C because those are both the next activities. But we can either use our formula, which is uh, the early start of A added to the duration of A gives us two. So for B we get two, for C we get two. That's using the formula. But if you think about it, because we defined it as the earliest they can possibly start, well if activity A starts at zero and lasts two days, the earliest that B and C can possibly start is at day two. And so we can move across the network doing D, E, and F the same way. We can fill in the values for G 
and h. But when we get to i, we've actually got three paths that feed into i. In other words, we have a join. If we were to come and but go back to our uh, rule for the forward pass, we use the highest value on a join. Remember that rule? And so for i, if we go the top route, a, b, d, from d, we could get a value of 10 in there. Coming from g, add 7 and 2 together, you get 9. Coming from h, 10 plus 3 equals 13. So the highest value is 13. So that's what we put into i. And that's the forward pass is complete now. So now let's do our backward pass. And the first step is starting with i, because we're going backwards. We set the late start to be the same as the early start. So we put 13 in there. And now we can work backwards again. If we want to, we can use our formula. And for d, g, and h, in all three cases, we can calculate the value of the late start by using the formula. So for d, if we go to i first, because that's the current task, the late start of the current task is 13. Go back to d, the duration is 5. We subtract the two. The late start of the predecessor, d, is 8. Likewise, for g and h, we can calculate those late starts. Or again, you can just use logic. The latest that five-day activity, d, can possibly start is at day 8, if it has to be finished by day 13. So again, we can work backwards through the network. But note now that we've got some joins. Going from E and F, we have a join before we get to C. Um, and now we've got a second join. Once we've completed B, from B and C, we've got a join going to A. So again, remember our rule. Going backwards, we use the lowest value on a join. So for C there, we've got two possible values coming from E and F. The lowest is 2. That's what we put in there. Now we've got another join going into A. We've got two possible values, 3 or 0. So we choose 0. And that's a double check that we've done the backward pass right. We should end up with 0 in there. OK, so our backward pass is complete, which means that we can now calculate float or slack, because the last formula you have to remember is that float is late start minus early start. Makes sense if you think about it. So we can just subtract through there. Uh, for D, for example, the late start is 8 minus 5 equals 3. Now note that some of the tasks in there have zero float. Those are, are our critical path tasks. Having a float of zero means that a task is on the critical path. So we can answer our question, what is the critical path? What is its duration? Be careful with the duration, as you'll see in a moment. And what is the float or slack of activity D is a possible follow-on question. So the critical path, all the zero float activities, A, C, F, H, and I. Duration, as I said, be careful. It's not 13 days, it's 15 days, because you've got to add in the duration of that task I. The best way is just add up the durations. Don't be fooled by the 13 in the early start. It's 15 days in duration. So there's the critical path. And the float and slack for activity D is three days. We'd already calculated that. So, reminder, there are two techniques. The first video looked at the quick eyeballing method, which will allow you to answer probably 90% uh, or so of the likely questions on network analysis. This video looked at the forward-backward pass technique in case we need to identify early start, late start, early, early finish, or late finish. The technique to use depends on the question. Um, use the eyeballing technique unless you're actually asked about early or late start or finish. Remember, also, when you've built a network diagram, retain that in case you need to use it again for follow-on questions. Don't throw away your scrap paper, but make sure it is the same network. Before leaving, I'd like to ask you to please visit my sponsor, Westall Murray International, a project management, support, services, training, and consulting company which specializes in balancing innovation with project management, not stifling innovation with too much project management, but making sure there's enough to make sure that your innovation is successful. So thanks again for watching. I hope you found this useful. Please look at the other videos in the series that you'll find on YouTube. Thanks again.